Cheers. Oh, shit. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. This is a disaster. It's a disaster. Move the box. Okay. Hey, nerds. JJ Ken Morris here. Welcome to my channel. Today, I'm very excited to have my fellow YouTuber, the Biblio Nerd, um, here on my channel. She talks about books, and uh, she's a big, as her name would suggest, bibliophile. Is that the right? Mm -hmm. right, bibliophile? Okay. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about the kind of two different schools of thought or I guess sort of like divergent, you know, array of thoughts when it comes to, you know, books uh, that are either character driven or plot driven, it, as well as talking about like does good writing make up for a bad plot and vice versa. So it's a little bit of craft and it's going to be coming from both a writer and a reader um, and kind of getting our separate opinions on that matter. So before we get started, make sure you hit subscribe and also feel free to join my um, reader community. There's a fly in here. <laughs> <laughs> that fly, I swear to God, has been in here for like three months. How is it surviving? Uh, probably a new fly, but oh. um, yeah, feel free to join my reader community uh, down in the description is a link. It's totally free and from there you get access to bonus content and a monthly newsletter for me. I'll also put down in the description and at the end of this video where you can find the Biblio Nerd and all of her content um, on Instagram and YouTube as well. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's dive right in. So character-driven story versus plot-driven story. Um, I think I already know your answer to this and, I, and mine is kind of the same. Like I prefer a plot-driven story over a character-driven story. Like both are important. Like you kind of, you obviously need both for a very effective story. But if I had to choose, I would choose a plot-driven story with like meh characters over like an interesting character that does nothing. What do you think? I am completely opposite. Really? I need a good character. Okay, for example, remember The Reckoners by Brandon Sanderson? Yes. If any of you have ever read that, I can't even tell you what that book is about, but I remember the characters. David, who is the main character of that entire series, is my favorite character. He's hilarious. He executes metaphors really poorly, as in he just uses them completely wrong, and it's hilarious. It's endearing. You fall in love with him. I have no idea what that story is even about. It's really? been years. Because uh, so I, read, I read that around the same time you read that, and I remember the plot, and I don't really remember remember him as much like I remember oh he was, my gosh I remember he's he was so funny. funny he's hilarious but like I remember mostly like the stuff that happened no I like, don't remember anything that happened. <laughs> I can't even tell you I can't even tell you what it's about but I can tell you that the main character is awesome he's okay. hilarious okay another example catcher in the rye I fucking hate that book it's a stupid ass <laughs> book I haven't read it in years so maybe if I gave it a reread I'd appreciate it a little bit more because I read it like in high school um but it's just about this kid who literally goes around the city doing nothing like I guess he's an interesting character but not interesting enough for him to do nothing and have a whole book that's like amazing on it I don't know do you remember Catcher in the Rye? I remember his name is Holden Caulfield yeah and he had and like a it. like a like a patch of gray in his head oh <laughs> super <laughs> random like a calic yeah it? like he like his hair was like brown or something and then he had like a gray patch and that hmm. was supposed to make him like interesting I don't remember at all and he was like crazy I don't know he was just like a neurotic character hmm. oh another example did you ever read the bell jar no. I, lo I love Sylvia Plath's like poetry, but the bell jar, boring. Like she's this depressed girl, does nothing. Like she's an, she could be an interesting character if she were to do something, she does nothing. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm more like, uh, what can, I okay, like Twilight, um, great plot. Um, Bella, boring. <laughs> that's true. Okay, that's valid. But the other characters are interesting, so I guess that gives it more... I guess, like, the main character doesn't have to be the most interesting as long as there's, like, other interesting characters mm -hmm. going on. I mm -hmm. don't know. Interesting. Yeah, for me, what I retain the most from reading my books is the characters, for some weird reason. Oftentimes, that's why I have a hard time when someone goes, oh, what's that book about? I have no freaking idea. <laughs> I can tell you the character is awesome, though. I'm reading this book by Sarah J. Mass, and, well, I'm reading the entire series. It's the Throne of Glass series, and the main character, Selena Sardothian, is such a badass. Can I say that on your channel? Oh, yeah. Oh, she's a fucking badass. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't really, I can tell you what the story is about only because I just read it, but I can guarantee you three, four, five, 18 years down the line, I will have zero recollection of what the hell happened in that book. But I can tell you that that character sticks in my mind because she's awesome. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean, ideally you want both, you know, you want you want the great character and the yes. great plot line and then they cohesive. Cohesive. <laughs> um, but, uh, oh, so let's let's then move on to kind of a, a, a divergent, not divergent, a side topic, side quest topic. Um, Ooh, side quest. <laughs> side quest. Um, when it comes to cinema, mm -hmm. I feel like the Hollywood model or the Hollywood formula has the whole like plot 
very like boiled down very perfectly and it's, it's all about plot and action sometimes they get too oh, carried away with the action um and sometimes the characters get a little bit left by the wayside or the characters totally left up to the actor's interpretation. interpretation or imagination or creativity like i feel like sometimes they just like be like here you're a good actor make this character good i know where you're going with this at least i think i know where you're going oh with where this. am i going with this dumbledore oh hurry <laughs> 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 Dumbledore is not like that. Who in Hollywood let that man ruin Dumbledore's Idiots. character? I don't know. Imbeciles. Imbeciles. <laughs> anyway, I thought that's where you were going. Uh, well, I mean, well, so like in the book, Dumbledore is like has a character. The the replacement actor just decided to not follow that character for the stupid reason. Anyway, if you need a lesson on having too big of an ego, then that would be it. But anyway, no, like so. Uh, what am I thinking of here? Okay, so. Like, there are some movies that are more like a character study, I guess they call them. Um, like, did you see the Joker movie with Joaquin Phoenix? Yes. Lo you mean Joaquin? <laughs> Joaquin Phoenix? Joe Quinn? Joe Phoenix. Excellent. Movie. That movie was brilliant. I loved it. But there's not much of a plot. It's really just about him as a character and his, like, origin story yeah. for becoming a villain. Um, maybe I liked it because I'm just such a huge fan of the whole Batman universe, and I, I love the Joker. <laughs> I love all, all the... What? <laughs> You know my favorite part? My favorite part of that movie. <laughs> You're really getting dancer. <laughs> it was so long since I've watched that movie, but I think of that so <laughs> And also when he runs into the glass. <laughs> sad moment and then it's like you really kick the guy while he's <laughs> down by having to run into the fucking glass door and it was like funny but you felt bad for laughing yeah. like that was uh, that was that was good he was the perfect actor he's a for great that actor role. Yeah. he really is although i can't think of any other movies uh, except for the, signs oh yeah he's in yeah. the gladiator he plays the bad guy oh oh yeah he's a good bad guy anyway uh oh what, what were we talking about oh so as far as like cinema goes like when you're watching a movie I don't know. I feel like Hollywood tends to push you more in the like plot driven rather than the character driven. The thing that comes to mind is Bella in Twilight. Cause yeah. Excellent books, terrible movies. Terrible movies. We should do a whole video on them. We should. We really okay. need to, if we have time okay. today, we should um, okay. rewatch yep. them. Because yep. I could talk about Twilight all day. Actually, I should reread the book, but no. I, I should. Don't, I don't have time. I don't have time. We don't have time for that. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so moving on to the second part of this topic, which is um, does good writing make up for a bad story? And does a bad story or like mediocre story you know is it okay if it, the writing is beautiful what are your thoughts beautiful writing for me is a bonus not a necessity i when i pick up a book i'm looking for a good storyline i'm looking for good characters i could almost care less about good writing however i will never complain if i read a well-written book i love wuthering heights i think that is a beautifully written story but i am there for the story and mm -hmm. specifically for the story so i think if an author can create a gorgeous storyline with beautiful characters and write it very well then yes you hit the trifecta of the perfect novel but i could do without the beautiful writing personally because I, that's why I don't read poetry. I do not care. I also don't try to understand what I'm reading. I want to just, un I want to know just by reading. You're there for, there to be entertained. Yeah. Yes. I feel like that's especially true when it comes to like genre fiction, you know, like the fantasy, romance, contemporary. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit, I can understand more like if you're, if you're really into like literary fiction, like that's 90% of literary fiction is the beautiful writing mm -hmm. and the whole like theme. You gotta be like, hmm, I have a good theme that no one's ever thought about. <laughs> I actually like literary fiction though, which is actually weird. That's inconsistent with what I just said. But I do enjoy literary fiction. Yeah, I think I think it depends on what what you're showing, what kind of expectations you have showing up. Um, mm -hmm. So I I agree with you for the most part. It's like I am there for a good story. Like again, to not to throw Stephanie Meyer under the bus in this video. I do love her as an author, but like mediocre writing. Yes, fantastic story. That woman knows how to tell a great freaking story. Mm -hmm. Like um, she's a master storyteller. Um, you can say the same about J.K. Rowling. Like people give J.K. Rowling a lot of shit. Um, for her writing style because it's very like amateurish or like juvenile or whatever I was like, okay Well, she started the series writing for middle grade. So, you know, I mean mm -hmm. it starts middle grade it ends young adult So it doesn't you know, like I, I don't think it that matters and you know You're there to be entertained and it's for a younger audience like you're not you shouldn't be analyzing it like you should a literary fiction um, but 
Um, at the same time, I can't give, I will cut, I will cut my rating down on a book if I don't enjoy the writing style. Hmm. Like I just read this book, um, Neon Gods by, oh crap, something Robert. I forget her, her first name. Kate? Katie? Katie Robert. Yeah. Great story. I really enjoyed the story. Um, I would have given it five stars, but it's four stars because I, I did not like her writing style. It was very pedestrian, very like cut and dry, like nothing beautiful about it. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I, I am more likely to pick up a book for the storyline, like you said, and then the, the beautiful writing is a plus. Like, if you have, like, a, like um, average writing style, like, your writing style is, like, average, like, that's my baseline, like, but if it dips under the average, I'm, like, gonna cut you down on my ratings because I don't, I don't, I don't know. Maybe just because as a writer, I appreciate the extra mm -hmm. work that goes into, mm -hmm. you know, all the, the sentence structure and the word choice and, like, I don't know. Wait, well, let me ask you this, then. If you pick up a book, it is lacking a good story it's lacking good characters but it's beautifully written do you end up liking it oh no, no. okay not at all yep yep not at all. me either i could not get behind that um yeah i'm trying to think of an example of that beautiful writing terrible story oh i can tell you i don't think you read it but it's called spinning silver by naomi novik who wrote um a deadly education yes. i love that book <sighs> i wish i had that book because it is the cover is beautiful that's why i bought it i heard about it on while I was watching a booktuber that I really love and she was really talking it up. For me, that was lacking in character development. It was lacking in plot, but it was beautifully written. I hated it. I hated it. It was a one star read for me. Would not recommend it to anybody, but I can see the appeal because it is gorgeous. It's written like a classic. It's gorgeously written. So I sometimes swing the other direction as far as like no plot, beautiful writing. I can get on board with that sometimes. Mm -hmm. An example would be John Steinbeck. Oh, um, that's fair. Like, some of his shorter, like, novelettes, like, mm -hmm. how would I read? Easy, oh. Lenny. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of Mice and Men is, is a classic. Um, I get not a whole lot of plot in that book, but I love that one. I love um, it, too. I've read a bunch of his other, like, shorter fiction, like, oh, this one called, like, The Wayward Bus. Stupid name. But nothing really happened, but it, I loved it. I don't know hmm. why. I, I guess it depends on the specific author who like I don't know has your certain flavor of writing that you like um yeah normally I don't care for books that have no plot um but for some reason Steinbeck I give him a pass because I think I just enjoy his writing so much mm -hmm. which here's another example of what I was talking about earlier I read East of Eden oh my gosh like 15 years ago in high school and I don't remember anything plot wise about that book but I remember the villain I remember her name was Kathy, and she was awful. <laughs> Can't tell you why or what she did, but I love, love, love that book. It's on my to-do list to reread that at some point. I still haven't read it. I it's so to. good. Really it's so good. To. So let me ask you this, then. If you have a book that's, like, mediocre everything, but it's beautifully written, you going to, like, break it up? In, I would. It's, it's star rating? Yeah. Yeah, I think I would, because I do, I agree. I appreciate an author that takes the time to actually really put a lot of energy and thought into their writing style and their verbiage not for diction is that what it's called diction yes Pro i think uh, prose prose yeah yeah so yes i would i think i would give it an additional maybe half a star just for that okay so okay then let me let me play devil's advocate here because i know how much of a brandon sanderson fan you are mm -hmm. but i know you've also read um never night by jay kristoff yeah. so two very different writing styles okay um brandon's got the plot he's got the plot Mm -hmm. He also has good writing, not quite as beautiful as Jay Kristoff, okay. but very good, right, solid, you know what I mean? He doesn't do all that fancy flourishes, mm -hmm. but it's solid, good writing. And then you have Jay Kristoff. He's also got the plot. Another level, yep. Maybe not quite the plot of Brandon Sanderson, but he's got a damn good plot. But he also has gorgeous, absolutely yes, amazing the best. prose. Yes. So... Where do you, where do you follow? Oh, that's <laughs> not fair because I'm a Sanderson brat through and through. Are. I have loved almost everything that I've read from him with the exception of one short story. We're not going to talk about that. But Jay Kristoff, he wrote the most intriguing first page to a book I've mm -hmm. ever read. For sure. Honest. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. If you have time, wow. go to, uh, I think you can download like the Kindle sample for free or go like read the sample free on Amazon. Um, the very first chapter of Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. You, you just got to throw in the towel and be like, all the awards. I don't need to read mm -hmm. another thing. Like that's Make time. It. That is Make time. perfection. Also, side note, wait, what'd you call it? Side bus? Side quest. <laughs> side quest. <laughs> side bus. <laughs> side bus, side quest. If you follow him on Instagram, Jay Kristoff, mm -hmm. he seems like he's a cool person. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because he's a metalhead. 
Oh, he's a cool dude. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> but he often posts one star reviews with their comments, and he just kind of pokes fun at it. And he's like, "Look at what people yeah, have." One star to say reviews of his own book. Yes. Yeah, it's pretty funny. He seems like a really cool guy. So that's not a fair question. So you declined yeah. to answer. <laughs> I plead the fifth. Well, okay, listen, because I have so much respect for both of those authors. I love Sanderson. For so many reasons. That could be a mm -hmm. whole other hour-long video. We need to do a video on that, too. We sure do. But Jay Kristoff, my word, he is a beautiful writer. I actually don't... I, he's the best. Mm -hmm. I really... I don't... He's the best. He's the best. <laughs> I don't know if I can even... But, there's no but you have not picked up the second book in the trilogy. And you've read all the Bar Brain and Sanderson. Yes. So I think that says something. It does. Yeah. It says something. It says that you are more... To a little bit, maybe more... Um, Plot... And character driven. Um, attracted ah. to, you know, the, the, the Brandon Sanderson versus the Jake Kristoff. Yes. Which, Brandon Sanderson, he does write very well. That's not to say that he doesn't, but... He doesn't do the fancy flourishes. Yes. Well, he does every now and again, but it's it's strategically in there. It's not like he... It's not every... It's not all the time, you know? It's like yeah. He's like getting the story out in a very perfect way, but not doing the fancy fancy well and let's say this too jay kristoff does the dark and dirty yes that's, is that your style that's, that's why i i think i gravitate a little i tip maybe just like 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 this much towards mm -hmm. jay kristoff and that because, makes sense because mm -hmm. i i feel like he fills the dark void that that sanderson only mm -hmm. skims the surface barely kristoff yeah. just d dives right oh, in there yeah. and i'm all about yeah. that Yep. Um, so yeah, I don't, Brit Sanderson sometimes doesn't get quite dark enough He's for clean. Me. He is very clean. He is appropriate for readers of all ages. I would not recommend a Jay Kristoff book, <laughs> unless it's one of his young adult books, to a minor. But oh, Brandon yeah. Sanderson. Like the Illuminae Files, those are great, yeah. Those are definitely young adult. I need to read those. I don't know why I'm putting it off. I think it's just because I know I think, I'm going to love it. I think you have to invest, <laughs> you have to invest a certain <laughs> amount of, like, time. Because you want to take your time to, like, appreciate yes. Yes. The beautifulness of the writing. You can't just really like you do not skim. Turning. Yeah. You do not skim Jay Kristoff. You'll be doing yourself a huge disservice there. Mm -hmm. Great pick. Okay. Um. I think we've covered. Did we cover everything we were going to talk about in this video? We're kind of going off topic. I, I cut. I cut all the off topic stuff out of here. Maybe I'll throw that in a bonus video Ooh. if you care at all for our rambling on um, side quest topics. Let us know down in the comments what you guys think, um, you know, if you're more plot or character uh, driven fans or if you are all about the beautiful writing or all about the story. Let me know down in the comments. I'm really curious to know all of you guys' opinions and various books that you think fall on one or another spectrum, one or another side of the spectrum. Um, also, make sure you like, share, subscribe and do all that fun stuff. It really helps with all the algorithms. Um, and also make sure you follow and subscribe and check out some of the Biblio Nerds YouTube videos. I will link all of that at the end of this video and down in the uh, description as well. Um, so yeah, any final closing comments? Book suggestions? Oh, always book suggestions. It really depends Just on what. Just one. Give one. Oh. This is hard. <laughs> well, uh, you know I'm always good for anything, Sanderson. I just started reading the Throne of Glass series. Oh, duh! <laughs> duh. Book recommendation, Fourth Wing, Rebecca Yaros. Okay, and my book recommendation is the sequel, Iron Flame. <laughs> Cop out, but yes. Anyway, um, check out the Biblio Nerds video on the subject. Uh, I will link that here on our collaborative video on Fourth Wing. Anyway, thanks for watching. Till next time.